Why would it be important to know who the people of Berea were and why would it be relevant for us today? What makes understanding the context of kingdom thoroughly essential? Please follow along with an open Bible, heart and mind, as we study the words of the scripture through the context of the time it was written. Greetings to the Kingdom Citizen Podcast. I'm your host, Glenn Cruz. And as an ambassador of the kingdom of God, I'm so honored and excited to be with you again. As it is the will of the king, politically and biblically. (laughs) I say that because, you know, we represent a government. And that is the kingdom of God. And when you represent the government of God. You are political and biblical. You can't separate the two. The Kingdom Citizen podcast was given to me by the spirit with a meaning and a purpose attached to it. So today we're going to do a word study on kingdom. But before we get into defining kingdom and talking about kingdom, We're going to talk about where word study actually, in my opinion, or not my opinion, but looking at the scriptures, looking at the town Berea and why that's important and what we can learn today uh, from from the Bereans. So let's go to Acts 17 and 10, and I'm going to. Read from the KJV. Uh, I use this to to word study because there's important words in the text that are missed when you uh, utilize other editions of the of the Bible. Not that the context of what they you know not the context, but what's written is 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 wrong. Uh, but the translation to English sometimes makes you know the translators utilize a different word place you know important identifiers ahead or behind a word or you know it's it just it it, it loses some translation and you know we want to try to stay within the translation so i like to use the king james version and i'm going to attempt to read out of the king james version i'm not a, a very good reader but um, we're going to start actually here in verse 2, Acts 17, 10, or yes, yeah, seventeen ten, verse 2. It says, And Paul and his manner was, went unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, And that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And then some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas. And of the devoted Greeks, a great multitude, and the chief women, not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of a badger sort, and gathered a company, and set the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to them out of the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying that they have turned the world upside down, or come hither also, whom Jason had received, and these all do contrary to the decrees to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city, and they heard these things. And then they were taken to the security of Jason and the others. They let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, whom thither 
went into the synagogues of, for the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. And that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. Interesting. They searched the scriptures daily to know if these things were so. Yeah, so now we can see from the scriptures that they were Jews for one. You know, so this this town was 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 Jewish. But they were under Roman rule. Uh, and from the scriptures, it says they had one remarkable trait, and it was that they created a habit of discipline, of reading and studying the scriptures daily. And that's what made them more noble as Paul considered them. You know, but I noticed that they were quick to receive the message. So it didn't matter who was speaking to them or who's speaking to you for that fact. Um, you can still receive the message of someone from the pulpit or someone that you're listening to on YouTube, wherever, but it's your responsibility to search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things are so. So if you want to know if what I'm reading or studying and, and, and communicating to you is so, we're actually going through the scriptures. So my job is to put the burden of proof upon the scriptures because that's where it lies. You know, so it's not lying with me. It's lying in the scriptures. But let's let's go and, and, and see what Berea is about. You know, so I have some information here that I searched the Internet to 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 figure out who were the Bereans. And it said that the Bereans were uh, it was a Greek city in Berea. It was called uh, Bera Bera or something like that in the time of the Apostle Paul back in A.D. 50. You know, so these people were mentioned in Acts and they were known for studying the Bible. Um, it shows here that the city's name today is Varia. It's actually located in a part of Greece known as Macedon uh, Macedonia. You know, Berea existed around 400 BC, and the indication is the people lived as early as 1000 BC in the time of Apostle Paul. It was a part of the Roman Empire, so they were under Roman rule. So that means that, you know, um, the synagogues there, you know, the, the Jews in the synagogues, they were under Roman rule, but they were able to, you know, run by their own law, which was the, the Torah. And they were utilizing the law uh, to rule the people, you know, but we're going to get into that, uh, that history a little later to, to grab an understanding of, of kingdom. You know, but uh, Berea was the center of Greek culture and learning. And today it's a commercial city. So it's still around today. So why is the Bereans important to us today? Let's get into that. You know, see, the Jews in Berea were familiar with the word of God. So when they heard the message, they believed. But they still went back to verify what he said was true. This is important. You know, I'm really attempting to stay away from my own opinions because that's not what this podcast is about. But as a disclaimer, I'm going to interject one. Um, I think we spend a lot of time today in the church or outside of church to daily devotions. You know, we try to get a snapshot of the word in so that we can feel comfortable and good about ourselves that we spent some time with God and or we, we listen to the word on the way to work. You know, you know, I, I get that. And we, we, we all do those things. Right. But I think it's more important uh, eating daily rations, as Jesus said in the scriptures. And that's, that's what he wanted us to do. So what can we learn and how can we apply today from uh, these noble people of Berea? Well, first of all, we should make the word of God 
our sole basis for truth and error. You know, don't go to others to to learn the word or to understand in the context of the word. You know, you you have to you have to do that for yourself. You know, and 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 I understand how this is done. Remember in my bio or uh, last episode, I was talking about, you know, I had a heavy dependence on a man of God. Not that I didn't research, but actually I did. I just didn't understand what I was looking at. Uh, didn't have any direction, but, you know, the word that how it was taught was, was good, but I was always searching for more. You know, but when I moved here and I, I lost dependency on man to feed me and God said, I want to give you meat. I want to feed you. And he surrounded me with with people to do that, uh, you know, in my men's group uh, surrounded me with people in in small groups that we we were a part of. And it, it, it kept me in the word. And then the more I was in the word, the more stuff was being revealed to me. Uh, not because I'm special. It was because I was in the word daily. I kept digging. I kept digging. And I think <laughs> eventually God was just like, man, you you keep looking for stuff. You keep searching for me. I'm, I'm just going to open up some stuff for you because this is what I want. And and I was able to just start hearing God's word. He was just talking to me. But um, let's just go back. So what we can apply from this is first, I'm going to reread that. We should make the word of God our sole basis for truth and error. Secondly, we need to be digitally searching the scriptures daily. You have to search the scriptures daily. No one's saying, you know, spend hours in the word, you know, it's it's taking a passage like we did today, rereading the passage, looking at words that were missing in the translation that you like to read and comparing that to the King James. And then actually searching up those words. Then once you do that, say, well, who was he talking to? Oh, he was talking to Berea. Who are these people? And then when you start getting context and then you start understanding, oh, they were under Roman rule. They were in a kingdom. So. They understood the terminology pray. They understood all those things. Right. For example, so those are the things that you need to know. And number three that we can learn is. We will be ready to receive God's truth by soaking ourselves in his word. That's what we can learn. And this is how we can apply it. Spending time in the word. If you hear pastors from the pulpit teaching the word, receive it. Receive it with gladness. But don't water the word with something else or don't allow them to leave the seed and water it. You want to utilize God to water the word. You want it to take root after you've done your study. And if it comes back that the word is good, accept it. Let the Holy Spirit walk you through. And, you know, Paul thought so highly of Berea that he actually is a verse. It's in Acts 20 where he actually went back uh, to Berea and picked up a person named uh Sopater, and he went actually with Paul on his third missionary journey. So, you know, he he really thought highly of those people uh, during that time, and he used them to help spread the the word of of kingdom at that time because they understood how to how to do that. So, uh, we'll just take a little quick break right now, and when we come back, we'll get into kingdom. Well, let's get into the term kingdom. 
to understand the kingdom of God, we first need to understand what an earthly kingdom is and how it operates. It's difficult for us to to even do this, those of us who are in the Western world, because we grew up in a democracy. You know, you always hear democracies being threatened, democracy, democracy, democracy. We are a democracy of self-rule. And that actually came from the Greeks. The Greeks are the ones that, that, that started democracy. Romans didn't like that. They took over. They loved how the Greeks, you know, did their philosophy, how they studied, how scholarly they were. You know, so they, they took everything and learned everything from them. But what they did was was different when it came to rulership. And we're going to get into that uh, in a couple of episodes as well, because that's going to be really, really key to unlocking, you know, kingdom and fulfillment of, of a, prof- a prophecy. But, you know, so this is important because those of us who were born Like I said, here in the Western world, we only know democracy. When we read something, we read it with that mindset. And it's an unconscious mindset, you know, that, that and that's what we base on, you know, our values. And I'm not saying that people base their values on on that. And I'm sure some of you guys are wondering, you know, how can that be true? Well, I don't base my values in life around democracy. You know, well, let's just think about it. We all want freedom. We all say, I know my rights. You know, what about the Constitution? You know, we say, well, you, you're imposing on my freedom of speech, my individuality, you know, my right to express myself and, and share my truth. Right. We, we all have that. And, and in the Western world, we're really big on that. And we 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 value that now. So I'm sure there can be countless hours of conversation just spent on that topic alone. But for the sake of time, you know, I want to keep it for the sake of learning. But let's briefly talk about a king. A king, sovereignty is absolute, right? This means he's not voted into office or power. His sovereignty has been imputed to him by birthright or he was born into it. The same is true with the king's lordship, right? So a king is, is is born a king. You don't you don't become a king without having a royal line, you know. So that's why rediscovering the scriptures and understanding, you know, now when you go through Matthew one and look at the genealogy, it's so important that Matthew walked you through understanding that. Right. Because it shows his kingship. That's very important. Why did he start out with with that? So there there needs to be an understanding uh, of, of kingdom. So there's a need to also understand two terms. And we're quickly running out of time here. But this is going to give you something to chew on for our next week. Uh, So there's a need to understand two terms. One term is dominion. The other word is domain. They're not synonymous with each other. Okay, these are two different terminologies here. So let's quickly go over that and then I'm going to save the rest for, for next week. Retouch on this. But the word dominion refers to a king's authority, his power. The word The word domain refers to property, the area, the authority in which it extends to. Right now, you can look up both these words. You can read the definitions in the English definitions. You can look at the Oxford Dictionary etymology of the word. You know, take some time to to familiarize yourself with those words. Those are important words in the kingdom aspect. Dominion and domain. Well, we're just going to leave it right there for now. And we'll jump right into kingdom again next week. But before you go, let's make sure you uh, 
subscribe to the podcast so that you can receive new episodes when they are released. So if you don't mind, just do that right now. Whatever app you're utilizing, there's more formats posted up now. Uh, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you like to get that. And lastly, just take a minute to leave a message, you know, and, and share this episode and, and share this podcast, you know, because uh, we can't get the kingdom message out if we don't uh, share it. So until next week, kingdom citizens, may the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. Blessings. Blessings.